Welcome back to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, Ray Leo Martinez. On this episode of the show, we are excited. Last night, we had one of your favorites, and of course, our favorite, and one of the radio's uh, ment mentees, Misael uh, uh, um, Lopez, last night at the Crown Plaza Hotel on the SCLA conflict card, earned his first title at 130 pounds. Hello. It was you know, a great night last night. You know, it was great. And, uh, I, you know, you know, Steve, you can just kind of see fighters that get into this game and and they're for real. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're for real. They they, they they fight. They got the style. They got the class. And, and uh, uh, you can just see it. I mean, you can see like the you know the Lomachenkos and the Floyd Mayweather's and everyone else that gets on. on you can kind of see it. And then you see the other ones that are protected. You know, they they really. They, they really fight, but they, they uh, uh, but you know what I mean, you can see, they're not, they're not, they're not what you would say championship quality, because you know they're going to run into a roadblock, and people say, hey, they say, or, hey, Radio, what, uh, why are you putting me signing in there so hard uh, when he's just starting? I said, well, because, Steve, you know, you know your fighter, you know your fighter, and you know what he's capable of. I'm not putting him over his head, mm -hmm. I'm putting him where he's at, okay? And like last night, like you say, he won a championship, and I'm excited. You're going to interview him. He's on our he's on our show now. He'll be coming up. He'll be coming up soon and uh, talk with you. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, everybody out there, you want to see this, you want to talk to him. And then of course the replay will be on the internet, so you guys can actually watch the fight. It was actually an exciting fight last night because Misael um, was in there against Ricky, uh, Ricky Rodriguez. They were both undefeated. I think Ricky was 4-0, and Misael, Misael was 3-0. and um, Ricky Rodriguez, regardless of what anybody wants to say or think, kid has skills. Right, kid has skills. mad things. His dad, Excellent. Jeff, had already said that one of the issues that they're having is that he wants Ricky to be more active. Yeah, Ricky told me last night after the fight that he's going to get back in and be more active. Like I put in my piece that'll be on InsideBoxing.com, he's not going to lose again. You don't no, have to worry about that. He's a stellar boxer. It's that, had a stellar amateur career. Yes. You know, won the titles. I mean, uh, uh, he's just one of them fighters that uh, that has a future in the game. And like you said, Aurelio, for you and for Misael, you don't want anything easy. You want to take on competition that you said is not above his head at this point, but competition that's going to improve his game. And last night, anyone there was at the Crown Plaza Hotel got to see Misael take another step. Yeah, uh, right you direction. know, I think. I think I'll go ahead and give Misael like about 15 uh, uh, pigeons, pigeons, you know, now that, you know, so that he can kind of calm down. So you're going to have him fight <laughs> me and who else? Uh -oh. Not. Nah, man, this guy's going to be champion before you can blink 40 times. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, listen, with that, guys, we're going we're gonna to come back and we'll have uh, Misael Lopez in studio. Welcome back to Inside Boxing's Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, my co-host Aurelio Martinez. Today we're in stu studio with the new SCL 130-pound champ, Misael Lopez from Denver, Colorado. This Saturday night, he took on a tough, undefeated opponent in Ricky Rodriguez from Greeley, and Misael came away with a unanimous decision win. Misael, welcome to the show. Thank You've you, been on before, but uh, everyone, once again, here's Misael. And we want to talk a little bit about uh, the fight itself, um, <clears throat> the build up to the fight and uh, what you and your manager and trainer uh, Radio Martinez are looking forward to in the future. So let me start off uh, just talking a little bit about your opponent Ricky Rodriguez. Um, Ricky's a highly decorated amateur. Um, my understanding is that he's got a win over Jose Ramirez, the top ranks um, oh, yeah. uh, young gun right now. In the amateurs. In the yeah. amateurs, right. Yeah. In the amateurs you had going over him. So this is a solid opponent for you and as far as I'm concerned the more thing was that you both were very respectful of each other, handled yourself as gentlemen, and you got in there and fought, and afterwards you remained gentlemen. I appreciate that for many of our boxers. And Misael, I'll let uh, you talk a little bit about the um, the fight itself. Yeah, man, I mean, uh, got to give it up to Ricky Rodriguez. You know, had his real, very, uh, has built a very well uh, reputation for himself. You know, had a really good amateur career, and, and he brought it to me. You know, he brought a good fight. He prepared himself very well, and I appreciate that from his team. Uh, they they uh, they were very, um, very humble, very... Yeah. You use on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were very, um, very respectful. Very respectful, respectful after the fight. You know, gave us our credit, and you know, had nothing bad to say. And I have nothing bad to say about him. You know, gave me a good fighter. He's a great fighter. Uh, but I'm sure he has a 
a lot left in him, a, a very bright future ahead of him. So yes. I thank them for the fight and best of luck to you guys. Yes, uh, Ricky and Jeff, like you said, very respectful. Jeff, a good trainer in his own right. Um, 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 and Ricky, and like I put in my piece on Inside Boxing, that he's not done. This by far is not done oh, for him. No. He no. admitted to me that, you know, his in inactivity hurt him a little bit. His body do wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do. So Ricky will be back. The radio? Well, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, we knew we knew coming in that we had a tough and undefeated uh, opponent coming in. You know. But our goals are set high. You know, obviously, obviously, I as trainer and a manager, I know what, what we have, and, I, and I've been around for over 30 years. I don't want to tell everyone how old I am, but... No, closer to I, 40. I've been, <laughs> I've been around. So you kind of get a knack for, for what's going on. And a boxer's career is short. So if you're gonna if you're gonna try to waste a decade or 10, 10 years of building building your fighter, uh, uh, then then you kind of lose it. And then 10 years comes around, you lose reflexes. Other things take priority in your life. You know, you got to get a job. You got to get get uh, uh, support your family. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of things. So so when you got someone that has the talent, has the natural talent. Okay, that you know you can capitalize on, then you need to go for the gusto. You know, you need you need to go for the gusto. You can't be stupid. You got to be smart, but you can still go for the gusto. And Misael has everything that a boxer has naturally to make it in this game. And I think I think in time people will will see that. I don't think there's any doubt about that. You know, the consensus pretty much statewide is that a real uh, that uh, Misael has what it takes. Um, you know, his hand speed, his, his good footwork, you know, and now he's uh, starting to work on his, his knowledge, you know, about what's going on. You know, I saw a couple of times during the fight Saturday night where it looked like he w thought about going in for the kill because of the crowd screaming, you know, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and a little bit. And I saw at those points, those were the times when Ricky stepped back and kind of laid one on you, made you back up a little bit and yeah. said, hey, this is not over by far. For sure. And that's a credit to Ricky. But more important about this fight, um, Misael, um, the crowd that was there on hand, it was an excellent crowd at the Crown Plaza. Tribute to Jeff Cisneros and Sparta Combat League. Um, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, with, along with Chris McLean. Chris McLean um, put together a nice little card along with the, 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 the boxers, managers from each one of the camps. Mm -hmm. um, there really wasn't any bad fight during the night. A couple of them, you know, went a little different, ended a little quicker than we thought. But all the fights, they were they were good in itself. And I remember you had, before the fight, you had an interview with Altitude, the folks from Altitude Television here in Denver. Mm -hmm. um, and they were raved about you, how you handled yourself. So everything's looking good for you outside of the ring. Let's get back to inside the ring radio. Good, good. You know, anyone can talk outside the ring. Me That's as a not trainer, no, uh, well, I'm about, no, I'm talking about me as a trainer, oh, okay. and me as a manager, and the fight fans that are observant. But in the ring... It's a whole different picture, you know. I I had the opportunity of being a boxer myself way back in the days. Okay, way but besides, besides, go ahead, go ahead and tell us, uh, tell us uh, how you prepared for the fight. Tell us when you got in the ring if it if it was everything you expected, uh, any adjustments you had to make in the ring. Uh, uh, just tell us, tell the fans out there how it is. Oh well, I have you know my my corner, my 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 two coaches did a, a tremendous job, you know, getting us ready for this fight. Who are I, your coaches? My coaches are Ebenezer Lopez and Aurelio Martinez. You know, they've been your dad. Your dad. Yes, sir. My father and Aurelio as well. And um, they did an awesome job, man. So we, we, we watched us actually well, we were able to be at his last fight, you know. So we were able to see a couple of his habits and stuff. And, and we knew he was a good fighter, you know. He's got some great, great hand speed. And uh, we knew also that he relies a lot on that, on those counterattacks. So, mm -hmm. so that kept us, you know, how to be smart about it. So we sparred against a lot of fast guys, you know, a lot of counterattackers. Uh, uh, so we were ready for that, man. And coming into the fight, you know, I, I thought I was going to be able to really, really put it on. Like we had said, you know, coming into trade and, and control. And he gave me a little bit of a battle. You know, every time I tried to come in wild or something, he, he caught me with that nice counter, you know. And then so, so I, I, I respected that. And um, for the same reason, I was I, I had to come in smart, you know, start filling him out, see what he had, and, and try to get my timing going. And once I found it, I feel like I started doing very well. You know, I knew he was, he was loading on that left hook. So I was able to wave, feign him, you know, make him throw that, and then come in after that. So... So yeah, it was a little different maybe, but um, um, he did a couple of things that we expected and we were able to capitalize. Okay, um, as far as at the start of the fight, I don't think we've ever talked about that. The crowds for you are getting larger, they're getting louder. <laughs> um, when you were coming to the ring, did you feel the butterflies, the excitement? Uh, um, was there an adrenaline rush that you had to ease down? Most definitely, <clears> man. <throat> uh, the, the crowd was amazing, you know, I gotta thank them 
for coming out, you know, all my friends, all the family, everybody, and the fans that became our fans, you know, the people that, that jumped on the on, on our fan base, you know, so I want to thank all them and thank Jeff and everybody for doing that. And it was amazing, man, of course, you know, because when you, we start walking up there and you hear all the screams and everybody shouting your name, it's really amazing, man. It's what you want as a fighter, you know, it keeps you going and motivates you to want to want to keep doing well every fight. So, yeah, I had to, had to remind myself that the fight was barely started, you know, that I, I hadn't won yet, so I tried to compose myself and, and go in there motivated, ready to get the job done. Sounds good. Now let me switch hats, okay? Let me switch hats from coach trainer to <laughs> to to uh, uh, commentator here, okay? <laughs> Misael, you're you're your first bout now, okay? Give you know, give it it's a it's a regional, it's it's uh it's a regional bout, but it's a professional bout, okay? You've had your amateur bouts, you had your, your world title bouts, uh, amateur side but now you're on the other side of the fence. Now you're amateur how does it feel? How does it feel you got your SEL belt? And it's the first one, the first one of many. Yes, sir. It feels, it feels really good, man. I'm proud of my team. I'm proud of myself. You know, it's it's a great feeling as a fighter to finally be stepping there. You know, the first one of many, and uh, and it just motivates you, man. It shows you, you know, you get that feeling of finally holding it. You're like, oh man, you know, all my all my hard work, you know, the late nights, it's all paying off, and it's just motivating, man, more than anything. And I'm really excited to win more and keep going. Okay, good. Now we talk about this because yeah, we talk about we got you on on a path, and our goals are to. To, to now pick up the green belts. Yeah, okay? definitely. Now, uh, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, we're, 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 we're targeting, we're targeting uh, the, WBC. the WBC regional belts. It'd either be a World Youth mm -hmm. or Continental Americas. It'd be one of the belts uh, from, the, from the WBC, but we want the green belts, okay? Those would be, but that's the belt that means something. And, and, and uh, Steve, just for your information and the people out there, we, we have targeted September of this year to get that first one. Uh, we've been petitioning uh, and talking with the WBC officials, so we're actually we're actually going 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 that route. Uh, Misael, I mean, uh, how, how does that feel that you're just, <laughs> just Man. targeting these, these major, it's, major belts? It's what I want, you know, ever since I even, before I even stepped into the program, you know, it's, it's what I was looking forward to, you know, I've always had, had my eyes on the prize and that's always been the goal, you know, for my team as well as for myself, so. I'm excited to hear that that we're finally getting so close to it, yeah. you know, and yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm ready, man. I'm more than ready. I'm ready to take on whoever whoever need I need to take out for that, you know, and and I'm excited. Yesterday, I mean, uh, Saturday was a really great step for me, you know. I I tested myself against a great fighter, and I felt like that that really put me in a great place, you know, and and it made me learn a lot as a fighter, and and, and it brings my confidence up, you know. So I'm excited, man. I'm ready to take it on. I'm ready to get these belts. Good, good. I mean, I'm excited for you. Uh, like we said that. This is a great belt to start off with. Sir. This is a stepping stone. The next belt, like you said, the green belt that means something along the way. I'm sure that there'll be great fights that um, <clears throat> your management team and your coaching team, you guys will all figure something out. But as we talked about for years now, it seems crazy. Yeah. But for years now, we've talk, talked about the path to, to greatness for you. And I think you're right on the road. You, you guys are going about it the right way. Sir. <clears throat> okay, we got uh, a little under a minute left. Miss I, you want to? Get some shout outs or talk to anyone out there. I mean, definitely, man. Uh, yeah. I, I think I'll start by, you know, thank my team most of all. You know, thank you guys for always, you know, my, my coaches, my, my sparring partners, everybody who's there every day, you know, putting work at the office, back at the gym. You know, that's the people I really want to thank because that's that's where all the hard work is done. You know, that's where these fights come from. And I want to thank Jeff Cisneros for the great opportunity. You know, it was an incredible show. And I want to thank um, uh, my sparring partners again, you know, the Hunter Castillo, Ricky Lopez. Um, Sergio, everybody who was at the gym, you know, pushing me and, and these guys really, really helped me get ready and be at, at the top shape, top level that I needed to be at for this fight, you know. Um, thank all the fans, my parents, my wife, you know, they, they did a really good job. A lot of people had to do a lot with the, with this win, man. Good. We, we had a lot of good, a lot of good help in the sparring partners. We had Gregorio Perez there. Andrew a lot, Strode. a lot of, uh, Andrew Strode. We had a, we had a lot of top quality uh, sparring coming in, so uh, thanks everyone out there. You know, just that, and then of course, your your better half that That's stands true. behind you. <laughs> Got to give her the. Oh yeah, yeah, she does a great job with my diet stuff. You know, she keeps me a chef. She she's you know smacks me a little bit if I don't get up and run. You know, all that good stuff. So she's great. She's awesome. Thank you. I'm blessed with it for sure. For sure. Well, good. There you guys go. Uh, Steve, you close it out, and we'll. Uh, hey, as usual, we're just glad to um, have Misael here. Um, our next show, I think we'll have uh, Rob Frankel probably on. He's got an upcoming fight. But this today is about Misael Lopez and, and getting his first belt, the SCL 130-pound belt. Misael on the radio, congratulations to you both. And keep it coming. And so, as we always end every episode of Inside Boxing's Throwdown, keep, keep the, the man's up, baby.